The range of emotions have been vast for the Boise State football team this season. From the lows to the highs, this team has experienced it all. And through it all, their dreams still remain intact. Come on, baby. Today in Fresno, the Broncos aren't just looking to claim the milk can, they're also looking to gain an upper hand on another type of trophy. Each season, the standard of excellence at Boise State is defined by their ability to compete for conference championships. And tonight, they can make a big leap up the mountain by making the Bulldogs bow down. Bronco Roundup Game Day starts now. Now, a special presentation from the KTVB News Group. Bronco Roundup Game Day starts now. Good evening and welcome live inside Bulldog Stadium here on the campus of Fresno State University. Jay Tusk alongside Brady Frederick kicking off the Bronco Roundup Game Day show on KTVB. If you joined us earlier today for the Bronco Roundup Game Day show on Channel 7, we'll have more injury updates and an exclusive live look at the field leading up to kickoff. Overall, though, Boise State trying to stay in the thick of the Mountain West Conference race and a win tonight is necessary in order to do that, Brady. Absolutely, and when you look at Fresno State, I mean, they need a win tonight just as much as Boise State does. So we're gonna be looking at a physical game and of course, a huge rivalry. Boise State has held on to the milk can for the last three in-season matchups. But of course, Fresno State took home the Mountain West title last year and definitely still a sting that the boys in blue behind us are feeling. Yeah, hey, let's look at the tail of the tape of this one. Boise State climbed back to 500 with a win over Wyoming last week. The Broncos jumped nearly 20 spots in scoring defense after only allowing seven points to Wyoming last week. As you can see, Fresno State is a well-rounded squad. They can move the ball on offense. They prevent points on defense. Boise State is going to have to play their best game of the season in order to come to Fresno and pull an upset against the Bulldogs this evening, Brady. Yeah, Bush Hamden said this week, you're probably most similar to the team that you butt heads with the most. The thing these two programs have in common, Jay, year in, year out, historically, they really have been the top two teams in the Mountain West Conference. In the Milk Can rivalry game, as we said, BSU has held onto the trophy the last three times they've met, but they also have met four times overall in the Mountain West Championship game. They don't put the Milk Can on the line for that. However, Fresno State did take it in the most recent iteration last year out on the blue. Of course, when we talk to Boise State players, it's business as usual. They're taking it one game at a time, focusing on themselves no matter who the opponent is, but you can't help but feel like there's a little bit more on the line tonight. We haven't had the milk can here in Fresno since 2017, um, so that, that fired the guys up. The stakes are a little higher. Those guys are confident coming down that ramp, and uh, they're not going to lay down. They're going to run their system well, perfect, uh, they're well coached. And it's just the fact that, um, to be honest, I really don't like these guys. Uh, so uh, the tension's always there. I know they have a bitter taste in their mouth, uh, seeing us win on the blue, seeing us celebrate on the blue last year. Um, so they're going to come and try to get after it. Uh, it's a physical game, um, you know, we, we look forward to it every year, uh, but I don't think the biggest thing is the rivalry, I think the biggest thing for us is just playing for ourselves kind of thing. It's a big deal because it has significant tradition here, um, and it's important to honor those things and things like that, but in our preparation, uh, we treat it as another game, and, and honestly, at this point in the season, every game is a championship level game for us. We try not to make too much of a big deal of it, but at the end of the day, we do play for a trophy, so uh, it does mean something, but... We're not gonna uh, blow it up more than it needs to be, and we're also not gonna look past it either. So we're gonna attack this week to be uh, one and zero, and we're gonna do our prep, and we're gonna show up, and we're gonna uh, play as hard as we can on Saturday. Madsen looking right now, back over the middle. Threw it to the back of the end zone, and what a catch! You know, you talk about that preparation. Some guys, when they come into college, maybe you have to catch them up to speed of what it needs to look like, and then there's other guys just understand it. A lot of times it comes from that situation when your dad's a coach, which his dad is. 
He knows what that looks like. Madsen quarterback draw five, and he's into the end zone. How to prepare, how to get the information, but not make it too much, if you will. Uh, and he's done a tremendous job in preparing himself. I think a lot of it comes down to the stuff behind the scenes that people don't see. He obviously has a high football IQ, right? He has a great feel for the game when he's on the field in terms of his ability to lead in the pre-snap. That comes with preparation and having the confidence. And then obviously once that ball snap, to be able to work through a progression to having the understanding of how to stay on time with his feet within the pockets and, and the pre-snap reads uh, from the certain coverages that he gets. We've got to continue to build off that. Here's a guy that, that you just got to know during the week probably takes about 25% of the practice reps. Uh, we've kind of all been there, you know, when you're, you're maybe in that role. So uh, I just can't speak to how proud I am of him. For him to go in there and play the way he does and be as efficient as he does speaks volumes about his game. Maddox Madsen, a.k.a. the Mad Dog, looking to have a big night tonight in the doghouse here in Fresno, Brady. And you know, we get so caught up with this quarterback controversy, the quarterback carousel, but sometimes we overlook the fact that Maddox Matson is a redshirt freshman that is actually playing some pretty good ball right now. Absolutely, you know, it's an unfortunate situation because of the quarterback controversy, but it really, no moment has been too big for the redshirt freshman, and he continues to subtly make strides week by week, and you, you gotta wonder what he's gonna look like at the end of the season. Yeah, either way, Boise State is gonna use the two quarterback system. All indications suggest that Taylor Green will start once again tonight for the Boise State football team. Let's go back a week ago and look at the comparison between these two and how they did against the University of Wyoming. It was by far are their best combined performance of the season since especially since they started using this multi quarterback system they each had a quarterback efficiency rating of over 184 which is more great than good Maddox completed 80 percent of his passes Talon had that beautiful 49 yard touchdown bomb to Eric McAllister with all of that in mind Maddox widened his gap when it comes to playing time with a 51 to 21 split advantage excuse me snap advantage over Taylor Green. Now this week the coaches continue to preach that Green has earned the starting role and is indeed still the starter. A big reason why Green was pulled last week was this costly fumble in the red zone. Shortly after that, Maddox came into the game and he hardly left the field after that. This week, Boise State alumnus Shane Williams Rhodes joined me on Jay's Sports Bar to talk about Maddox's success. There's been so much time spent on um, you know, just the fact that there are, there is a two quarterback system versus maybe saying, man, Maddox Madsen's done some good things when he's been on the field. And yes, I know there were some times against in the Colorado State game where he wasn't great. But if you see the way that Maddox kind of processes the game, he processes it very, very quickly. I think that he gets through his reads very quickly. And sometimes he gets to a, a fourth read. I particularly like the plays where you also can tell his smarts and his instincts are are on full alert. And those are like these these plays where he sees something pre-snap and it's not a designed draw. And Maddox turns it into one where he goes and gets, you know, five, six, seven yards, maybe a first down, these these critical little drive sustainers yeah. or or plays that put you ahead of the chains. And and these are things that he is doing on his own at times. No, for sure. Um he's he is finding ways to make plays in the right situations, and he's getting better at not turning it over. Yeah. Which is something that we really touched on a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. him just, he, if he has too many attempts, which I think Taylor's still getting a pull from those attempts, I think that's helping him more than it's hurting him because it's not putting him in harm's way. Just a reminder, the latest edition of J Sports Bar drops every Wednesday. You can watch it on YouTube or listen on Apple Podcasts. Hey, guy, we're going to be keeping an eye on tonight is sophomore running back Ashton Gent. He only played nine snaps last week. He left the game following that hurdle in the first quarter. He picked up 53 yards on six carries before going to the locker room and returning in street clothes. Head coach Andy Avalos told us it shouldn't be a long-term deal with Ashton. OC Bush Hamden added that Ashton told him he didn't necessarily feel right early in the game last week against Wyoming, so they decided to go with George Halani for the rest of that contest. Now, we will have a, a more, well, more of an update on Ashton coming up here in just a few minutes, but I will add this in the meantime, a number of the running backs came out on the field to warm up. 
Ashton Genty was not one of them. We'll see. We're going to continue to monitor that for you live here on Bronco Roundup Game Day. Check out the uniforms for tonight. What do you think, Bronco Nation? Black helmets, white jerseys, black pants. It's the fifth time in school history the Broncos have rocked this combo. They're 3-1 all time when they do, including a victory the last time they wore this look at Air Force last season. I want to draw your attention to the helmets because um, this is kind of a, a notable change. The logos that used to exist on these helmets ever since 2019 was almost a blue Bronco with an orange eye. Those were chrome dipped during the off season. They decided not to do that this off season, and that allows them to now have interchangeable stickers on the side of the helmets, like they do pretty much with every other one of their helmets. So that is why for the first time since at least 2018, you are seeing this black helmet with that chrome sticker on it. I like the helmet. Don't know if I'm sold completely on the look. Yeah, I like the helmet shape because I like the versatility. The chrome was really cool, yep. but I mean, the, the sticker allows you to do a little bit more. And we've talked about it. The issue, I think, is the blue and orange just doesn't, that kind of clashes with the black and white, the business attire. Just, looks that they just got a going. little bit, just a little bit. What do I know about fashion, though? Yeah, you're not, you're no Justin Kaur. I'm no Justin Kaur. Exactly. The Bronco Fashion Report with Justin Kaur. As long as we're talking about a little bit of fun here, we're having a little bit of fun. You know, it was Halloween this week, and the players were certainly in the Halloween spirit. Scariest guy on the team. Oh, man. Um, I might have to say, mm. Yeah. Personally, All day, man. Ahmed is obviously a big physical guy real strong, he does like jujitsu. I'd probably say like Ahmed sometimes. A lot of the, my football guys just see me in that football mode. Which is I like to scream or I like to yell a lot. We play the same position so he's he's nice to me, he's, he's my brother, but if it was like flip sides, I definitely would not want to meet him when he's in a bad mood. Definitely not someone you want to see in a dark alley. You ask the question if they walk in a dark alley, I would die from a game. Like, it's, it's, it's that serious. It's just like, if they walk in a dark alley, all right, I'm coming with you blindfolded. I don't care where you go. I'm right behind you. Who do you, would you rather take in a dark series? Yeah, take me, because I, I would protect you with all my life. Best Halloween outfit? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Um. I was a Transformer one year, that was great. And then I also dressed up as Batman a lot because that was my favorite superhero. There's a, something in Egypt, we called, like, we called it the Galabea, and then it had a hoodie on it. So I changed it and I was like a Jedi. But it's really, this is what we wear in Egypt. I dressed up as like an old man one time and I borrowed my grandpa's cane and I broke it and I had to get him a new one because he couldn't walk. I was leaning on it too much. I was a big kid. I was like probably in like sixth grade and I was like 200 pounds. I broke his cane, I felt so bad. Candy I can't refuse, probably. Oh, that's a good question. M&Ms or any types of like airheads. I love Abba Zabba's. You ever had Abba Zabba's? I grew up on them. My mom would always give them to me, they're my favorite. I really like the, the warms, the sour ones. They have like two different colors. And also uh, Jelly Ranchers, they're really good. Jelly Ranchers, the gummies. The gummy Jelly Ranchers are one of the top two. All right, we're back live on the field here in Fresno, California, right in front of you, a couple of the war running backs warming up. Um, George Halani on the field, Breezy Dubur on the field, along with Tyler Crow, Caden Dudley, Troy Wilkie. All of these guys fill out the depth chart at the running back position. One guy noticeably missing right now leads the country in yards from scrimmage, Brady. At the moment, I do not see Ashton Genty out on the field for warmups. Yeah, and that's tough to see, but in a way, if this was, if this had to happen, it is coming just in time. George Olani came back, expected to play fewer snaps, uh, but when injuries came out, he, he had to take a bigger load and lived up to it and, and was ready to play. Uh, I, he told us that he, there's really no restrictions and he's ready to go and we should expect him to be fully ready tonight. Yeah, either way, big shoes to fill without Ashton Genty in the lineup. Breezy Dubar, the true freshman, 
also going to play a bigger role this evening, trying to take some carries off of George Halani. Another guy that I see out there at midfield, a guy I kind of expected back number 13, Chase Penry. The wide receiver has been out ever since the North Dakota game with a shoulder injury, but it looks like they will get their punt returner and a guy they really like in, in the slot at receiver back in the lineup this evening that should give the offense a little bit of boost. There he is, Chase Penry, the Colorado transfer. Underrated quarterback as well for what it's worth. If they want to try out a three QB system, he's got a uh, perfect passer rating so far this year. <laughs> In all seriousness, I'm right there with you, but he does boost the receiving core. They really need some pop tonight. Without Ash and Genty, they have to find explosive plays. Maybe Chase, Chase Penry can provide them. Another guy that should be able to provide them, George Alani, number 24. We're going to have more on him in just a moment, but last week he returned to action. No snap count. Well, I should say went into the game with a snap count. The game started, and they removed the snap count. He ended up with 23 touches in the contest last week. 20 carries, 75 yards. We'll see if he can continue to get it going tonight, Brady. Yeah, and that's one of the things about George. I mean, durability was a concern after last season and coming into this season. Obviously, he had missed a huge stretch of games leading from the season opener against Washington. But when it comes down to it, George really is the kind of guy who's ready to do whatever it takes to try to help his team win. And, man, it's a great sight to see number 24 back warming up again. We continue to give you a live look on the field as the Broncos are warming up on the goal line. Number 15, Colt Fulton, is going to carry out the hammer today. Brady, I don't know how many times in my career the quarterback has carried out the hammer, but Colt Fulton gets that honor this evening after his two-point conversion toss last week against Wyoming. Maddox Matson warming up down near the goal line, too. Right next to him is Taylor Green. If I'm calling this correctly, Taylor Green warming up with Mason Randolph, the starting center. So this does indeed suggest that Taylor Green is going to start tonight for the Boise State football team with Maddox Madsen once again coming off the bench. Garrett Curran, I expect to slide back over to that right guard position with Mason Randolph starting at center. We'll see if TG10 can get it going tonight. Made a beautiful throw last week, and it looked like he was destined for more playing time, Brady. But then he fumbled the ball, and Bush Hamden just made what he called an emotional decision. Said they got to take care of the rock. Went with Maddox Madsen for most of the game from there on out. And you and I have talked about it before. I'm not too worried about Taylor Green fumbling the ball. When you're a mobile quarterback, it's something that's going to happen, and it's going to happen a couple times in the season. It's all about how he responds. But what I do like about this quarterback competition, for the first time in a while, it felt like the threat of Maddox Madsen coming in and taking over pushed Taylor towards success. I mean, third down, third and long situation, he knows that could be it, and, and have number four go in. He went and made something happen, found his favorite target, back downfield. Hey, I know the sample size was small last week. He only threw six pass attempts, but technically that was the best quarterback efficiency rating of Taylor's career. You want to talk about QB efficiency rating? Maddox Matson leads the Mountain West amongst all quarterbacks in QB efficiency rating at just over 164, minimum 50 pass attempts. He's attempted 79. I, I, unfortunately, he's going to have a tough time attempting enough passes this season to qualify. You have to average at least 15 per game, and he's well below that. And with this rotating quarterback system, I doubt he can make up the ground. If you drop that bar, though, to allow him to be a qualifier, he certainly stacks up against pretty much anyone else in the Mountain West Conference, Brady. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, two Mountain West Freshman of the Week honors already. Boise State has a chance to go back-to-back -back Mountain West Freshman of the Year. Both quarterbacks and both guys who are still seeing the field. How about this? George Halani was once a Mountain West Freshman of the Year. Maddox Madsen might be contending for that title. Taylor Green's already claimed that title. Ashton Genty might be the Offensive Player of the Year in the league. That is a lot of talent in one backfield. Yeah, and it really, it really shows the, what they've been able to do recruiting-wise. Yeah, I agree with you. So again, the guys continuing to warm up on the field. Again, anticipating Taylor Green is going to start tonight for the Boise State football team. Let's get you an updated look now at the Mountain West Conference standings. Wyoming beat Colorado State last night to attain bowl eligibility. They now join Air Force, Fresno State, and UNLV as the teams that have achieved that postseason status. Boise State still two wins shy of guaranteeing them a spot in the postseason. Right now, the Broncos are also a game and a half behind Air Force. Air Force lost today, but it was a non-conference game, so the Falcons still sit atop the standings. The Broncos are going to look to build off the momentum they created last week, though, when they handed Wyoming their most lopsided defeat of the season.
Next up for Boise State, as they return from the bye, the Wyoming Cowboys come to town. We all know that Craig Bull has done a phenomenal job in Laramie. They will be one of the most disciplined and toughest teams in the Mountain West Conference because that's exactly what they have been year after year. Can Boise State answer that call? Can they be as if not more disciplined, as if not more tough than this Cowboys team that is exceeding expectations right now? Peasley drops back into the shotgun. Bronco splits up the middle, forcing Peasley to throw it, and it's intercepted. A jumping, diving interception. Ty Benefield, the freshman, comes up with it. Dudley in motion left to right. They fake it to Dudley. Madsen looks to throw right side into traffic. It's caught at the five-yard line. George Halani with the catch. Gain of 17. And the Broncos are brought in the Clydesdale package. Second and goal. First and goal. Are behind Gums in the backfield. Hand off Dubar. Dubar up the middle. Touchdown, Boise State. Breezy Dubar with his first touchdown as a Bronco. The freshman scores. And it's 14-7, Broncos. Zone read. Green going to take it. Right side. 10-5. Touchdown, Taylor Green. Seven, Boise State with 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Strawn to the left, McAllister to the right. Madsen looking right, now back over the middle. Threw it to the back of the end zone, and what a catch! Touchdown, I believe it was Strawn. Prince Strawn with his first touchdown as a Bronco. Great coverage by Wyoming, but somehow Strawn able to hold on to the ball. Touchdown, Boise State. It's 28-7. See what Boise State throws at him pass rush wise. Four come. Good protection this time. Now breaking free late is Hassanin for the sack. Back at the 29 yard line, Ahmed Hassanin with his sixth sack of the season. Peasley awaits the snap, gets it. Big rush in the middle. Peasley's going to be sacked again. Sack number two for Boise State. I don't know who got there because there was a ton of orange. It was roll call for the defense. Minus eight on the play. What a win for the Boise State football team. You can feel in the press conference just the weight of the world fall off their shoulders. They had to sit and deal and think about that loss at Colorado State that just festered through the bye week. They bounced back against Wyoming, though, with arguably their most complete performance of the season and easily their biggest blowout of the season, especially against an FBS opponent. Yeah, and I mean, you take a look at San Diego State, San Jose State. Those were good wins, but they were tight wins. Uh, a lot of drama down the stretch. This one, I mean, by halftime, you, you, you felt pretty good. By the third quarter, you felt really, really good. And I think the biggest thing that you, you take a look at, the defense really stepped up. I think that was the most complete game from the defensive side of the ball. And it's something that's been a work in progress this year because the Bronco defense is one of the youngest you're going to find in college football, especially as they have dealt with some veteran players getting injured early on. However, when the young guys get thrown into the fire, what happens is they get more and more reps, and then suddenly they don't look so young anymore. Uh, the underclassmen are starting to create roles for themselves, just like the team, just like the coaching staff has wanted to see. There might not be a better example than the sophomore yeah. linebacker, Andrew Simpson. Week after week, he continues to take a step forward, and he's really now cemented himself as a centerpiece of this D. Take a look. Bronco Roundup's Roadmap to Victory is sponsored by Treasure Valley Ford Stores. The week he had of practice last week, it was the best week he's had since he's been here, and I'll never forget. We, we leave our pregame walkthrough, and we're getting ready to go to our pregame meal, and he's sweating because of the type of walkthrough he had. I'm talking, we play a game in three and a half hours, whatever it is, and I looked at him and said, you're about to ball out tonight. And he's like, I know. I mean, don't get me wrong, he has great instincts, but a lot of it is prep. I mean, he had an awesome week of practice last week, and uh, that showed on Saturday. That's just a testament to how they work each week, and they're super urgent, and they want to get better, and they want to help this defense, and they show that, they prove that. So it's awesome to see them be, go out there and make the plays that they have. No, really proud of Drew, man. I mean, you talk about a kid that we asked to do a lot. 
I mean, he's played all over the field um, in, in regards to the box, what we asked him to do. Andrew's always been a very talented football player, um, very athletic, can rush, can blitz, can cover, very savvy. But he's really grown in his time here, what it takes to play linebacker here. And especially playing with a young group, you know, seeing the, the guys we got, the majority of them are all coming back next year. But, but at this point, they're not young anymore. And seeing them continue to grow to be able to make some of those plays. But just proud of our guys playing a, a complete game and obviously still a lot to grow in, but proud of where we're heading. We're back live on the field. The Boise State cheerleaders are getting ready to go for this game. Boise State, a three-point underdog. An underdog in this matchup to the dogs with Mag Dog starting at quarterback in the doghouse. Yeah, I like to you see follow that. me on I, that. I, a lot of dogs going on. Do you know? Soon also, after the Drake release of the album for all the dogs. We've, I think they've been playing it on the PA system. Hey, it gets a little hostile in the stand sometimes. Um, also, you're supposed to text Bad Dog if uh, you're running into some trouble into the stands. So. And they have the hot dog race that uh, Jeff Tedford has told us is, is the biggest atmosphere, the biggest draw to this stadium for Fres local Fresno uh, natives. I certainly hope you all have as much fun watching Bronco ga Game Day as we do hosting Bronco Roundup Game Day. Markel Reed, number eight, has missed the last two games. He didn't even suit up for the Wyoming contest. Obviously, uh, there was the bye week. Prior to that was the Colorado State game. He suited up for that game, did not play in that game. But I certainly like what I see right now. Number eight, their senior leader at cornerback. It looks like he is going to be able to play tonight and contribute for the Boise State football team as they continue to get through warm-ups here live on the field in Fresno, Brady. Yeah, another guy I like taking a look at, dude, Jalen Clark was all over the field last Saturday against Wyoming. All in. The defensive backs are really starting to put it together. Something we noted throughout last game in our post-game coverage, Andrew Peasley sometimes had a little bit of time, but the DBs didn't give him anywhere to throw. We'll have another live look from the field in Fresno. Bronco Roundup game day continues right after this. Man, I'm excited. It's always a good environment. It's going to be a good experience. Fresno and Boise State always been a rivalry, and just we can't wait to get after them and show them what we do. This has been one of the best weeks of practice. Everybody's just executing their job, so I can't wait to just show them Bronco Nation what we can do. Yeah, he preached talking about Kyle Bratzman, and I still believe him to be the best. He did a lot of great things for this program, had a lot of made kicks for this program, and, and he was at our practice today, too. Tyler Ross invited him and wanted him to come and be a part of practice today because obviously, like, I know I'm right there, and, and, and Bratzman knows that I'm right there. So he came to show some support, and that was awesome for him to come to our practice and just, you know, show that appreciation and gratitude. And he was just like, you know, dude, like, keep working hard. Um, he told me keep being consistent and, and keep doing the things that you're doing. And the biggest thing that he told me too, he was just like, you know, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy for you that you have this opportunity. He said, I wouldn't want it to be any other way. Like, I'm excited for you. So that was really cool to hear a longtime legend here at Boise State say those things to me. Check this out. This is the all-time leaderboard in field goals made at Boise State. And as you can see, Jonah Dalmas sits one field goal behind Kyle Bratzman for the school record of 63. Jonah's gonna rewrite the record book when it comes to the kicking game at Boise State. He already holds the all-time mark for career field goal percentage at 86.8. He is well above uh, the previous record holder too in that. Almost 10% above the, the previous record holder. And he's made 26 field goals in a single season. That happened two years ago. That is the school record as well. Jonah, an all-timer when it comes to Boise State and the kicking game. I really thought it was cool that Kyle Bratzman took the time to go out to practice. Tyler Rossa, another legendary kicker at Boise State, helped orchestrate that. And uh, it, it puts the brotherhood on full display. I want to take you back out really quick and show you this live look we got right behind us on the field because we have the linebackers warming up. DJ Schramm is out there. We expect his snap count to increase tonight as he returns to his hometown. You can see a couple of the other linebackers out there. True freshman Chase Martin, Andrew Simpson, who's really starting to come on. Gavin Hambrick, number 55. 
A guy we don't see is the team's leading tackler, Marco Notriani. Not on the field warming up, not even sure that he's in Fresno tonight, but it doesn't look like the Broncos are going to have uh, have the ability to utilize his talents on defense this evening, Brady. And I mean, last week he didn't get a lot of snaps. I think we assumed that was because he was sharing time with DJ Schramm making his return, but, you know, there might be a little bit more to that, Jay. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see, but it looks like Boise State's going to be a little thin at that linebacker spot this evening as they gather up with Spencer Danielson, the defensive coordinator, who is also their position coach down near the 13 yard line to get ready to go for tonight's game as long as we're talking linebackers we might as well turn our attention to number 52 Brady That's who, right. who finally got back in the lineup last week yeah and just in time because tonight is a homecoming trip for Boise State's captain DJ Schramm back in the early 2010s his dad was the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs oddly enough his son ended up playing defense and for one of their biggest rivals. The Fresno may have made his return to the field last week after battling injuries throughout the year, played about 20 snaps, as we've said. He told us this week, though, he is fully ready to play tonight, low limitations from the training staff and no pitch count. But he also says with the young guys who have stepped up into these positions while he's been out, he's got no problem sharing the snaps with his teammates because they've earned it over the past couple games. I mean, I've told Coach D for a long time, I mean, I'll do whatever I can to help this defense and, uh, and help this team. And when I wasn't playing, I was helping the linebackers during the game. And now it's whatever my role is. I mean, it could change week to week. So uh, if it needs to be the alpha male, I'll do that. But uh, I don't think there's any pressure regardless, uh, just because of the guys we have uh, on our defense, the guys that, uh, and the way that they show up and prepare and how they play. Very proud of the coaches. And it wasn't just on Saturday, right? It's what Coach D and the rest of the defense staff has been doing the last couple weeks. Very proud of those guys and bringing it together so that uh, the players can truly understand and grow and be better. And the cool part about that is we got a lot of football left to play and we've, we've got the opportunity to continue to grow and get better. It obviously was visible in the hard work that Coach D has put in with the defensive staff and uh, the game he called on Saturday and the positions uh, he put the defense in. Well, the Boise State defense was really good last week. They have to replicate that performance again this week. But if you really look at this stretch of football, Brady, outside four minutes and one seconds against Colorado State, it has been about a two and a half game stretch where this Bronco defense has really started to turn the corner. You can see some of the guys warming up right now. That's true freshman Max Stege out of Germany going up against Hall Schmidt on the offensive line. You can certainly feel the electricity once you get up this close to the action. Garrett Curran, one of the team leaders on this team. And there you have Ahmed Hassanin. He currently ranks third of the Mountain West Conference with six sacks. He also ranks third in the Mountain West Conference with uh, nine tackles for loss this season. He is a guy that is starting to flip the switch, Brady. He has had at least one sack in five out of the last six games. Yeah, Andrew Simpson not too far behind him as well. They're really focused this week on getting pressure on the quarterback. One of the things about Fresno State, they always have a great quarterback. It was Jake Hayner for the last couple of years. He graduated, now plays for the Saints, or will when his suspension is over. But you got a new guy, Max Keen out of UCF. He's another guy who can sling it, move the ball, and they got to get up in his business if they want to slow the Bulldogs down. I don't know where else you're going to get a live look just like that. Cade Bearsford going into the middle of his unit up front and uh, leading the charge with the offensive line. Cade Bearsford is going to make his 22nd consecutive start for the Boise State football team this evening. Jalen Neal, a very young cornerback that has been thrust into action lately due to injuries at that cornerback position. Franklin Johnson out on the field, getting ready to go. He's a true freshman as well. Wouldn't necessarily expect him to play tonight, but these are good experiences for young guys like him to get to travel and be a part of the game day experience, Brady. Absolutely, and you, I mean, the, you don't expect him to make an appearance tonight, but you also just never know. Boise <laughs> State calls himself a developmental program. But I'll tell you what, I'm sure they're hoping they get him into the game because maybe Boise State could uh, keep this momentum going, take another uh, around 21-point lead in right? the fourth. Breezy Dubar watching as George Halani takes snaps with the number one offense. It looks like Ben Dooley going to start 
at left guard for the second straight game. He returned a week ago from an injury. That offensive line fully intact as Garrett Kern is going to be the starting right guard with Cage Casey and Cade Bearsford starting at those tackle positions. You can see Zion Washington getting ready to go, and then TG10. What a season it's been for him. Certainly, it's tested his confidence. It it's tested his uh, approach to the game, probably. But it's also pushing him to learn and grow, and we'll see if he can get back on the right track tonight. You know. If the game plan holds true, Bush Hamden, who you see right there, said he wants Taylor Green on the field for 60 to 65% of the snaps. It looked like that's what he was trending towards last week, Brady, but then he fumbled the ball and Maddox Matson took over. So I would have to say priority number one for Taylor Green tonight, taking care of the rock and being able to stay on the field for his offensive coordinator to continue to run with TG10. I want to mention this too about Bush Hamden. Boise State now up to 30 points per game on the season, a mark they haven't hit since the 2020 season when Brian Harson was the head coach here at Boise State, Brady. You know, one of the things I remember back from uh, our introduction to Bush Hamden, two of the things he really said he was going to prioritize, take care of the ball and get the ball to your best players on the field. Now, whether Maddox Madsen or Taylor Green is getting most of the snaps at quarterback, no matter what, Taylor Green is going to be one of the best players on the field, certainly one of the fastest players on the field. I, I like the fact that they're pushing to keep him out there as long as they can. And I like that he's embraced the competition and showed that he's got great character. We've heard all about it, but man, he's proved it this season as he's been tested. Maddox Matson leading this number two offense. We're nearing the end of warmups here. Prince Strawn breaking the huddle. Caden Dudley right in the foreground right there as uh, they continue to kind of go through what they do every game uh, moments before kickoff. We are down to about 25 minutes until we actually kick this thing off. We're gonna keep going just a little bit longer here live from the field in Fresno. As you can see, Rick Moore also getting ready to go, a reserve offensive lineman for the Boise State football team. C.J. Taylor up front, Riley Smith, who delivered a real passionate speech last week, Brady. I don't think that should be overlooked. The senior leader speaking up when he felt it was time to speak up. Against Colorado State, we all know what knew what happened or know what happened. They were up big. It looked like they were going to cruise to victory, and they lost. So last week against um, Wyoming, Riley rallied everybody up, up 29-7, said we're finishing this thing tonight, and they did. They blew out Wyoming 32 to seven. Man, I tell you, Shea Oladipo plays with a lot of heart and a lot of passion. He, too, has been playing pretty good as of late. You know, for the people who are watching at home, I really want you to try to pay attention to the, how the defensive backs celebrate. They have some exciting things they do. You can sheathe the sword. They all have elaborate handshakes. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun, and, and I, just, I encourage people to take a look at it and how much fun these guys are having playing the game. We're getting closer and closer to the end of warm-ups here as we continue to give you this long live look at the field. 25 minutes before kickoff, down to 23 minutes, I guess I should say. Boise State wrapping up with some special team stuff before they head back into the locker room. Troy Wilkie out of Rocky Mountain High School. Shale with Depot, been playing some big time ball as of late. The team's starting to come together. We'll see if they can continue to get it to come together. And then Eric McAllister. He's not one of just the best receivers in the Mountain West Conference. He's one of the best in the country. He is 202 yards shy of 1,000 for the season. Brady, that would put him in some pretty elite company when it comes to Boise State pass catchers. Absolutely, and I mean, he's got a lot of time to get there, but also, I mean, he's been putting up 150, 160 yard performances on a pretty regular basis. When you scout this team, I mean, he looks like a guy who's gonna be getting the ball, but there's the problem about it. He's really fast, he's really tall, and there's not a lot you can do about it, even if you know it's going his way. All right, the players are leaving the field. That is the last yeah, you can time hear that the we will boos. see them. You hear the boos as the players leave the field. Last time we'll see them prior to kickoff here at Bulldog Stadium. We're down on the field. The band is around us from Fresno State. We're just kind of um, amongst the chaos, but hey, we want to take you to the chaos here on Bronco Roundup Game Day, and that is exactly what we're doing right now.